Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Another new video. In this video, we're continuing the Java data structures algorithms bootcamp. This is an important video, and also a lot of people requested for it. In this video, we're going to learn how to work with files. So file handling, reading and writing from files, see how input and output operations are performed in Java, various Java classes, and so on and so forth. This is an important video because, as I mentioned in the previous videos, when we were talking about how to work with large data, large numbers, that sometimes when you're doing your QA rounds or you're giving some contests, the company or the contest, they give you a file with all the inputs and they say that give us the output file. And you're like, but we don't know how to work with files. So in this video, we're gonna learn that. And uh, I'm gonna explain to you what different uh, classes basically mean. So there are a lot of classes in Java when we work with input and output streams. So we'll understand how they are structured and I'll try to give you build the intuition so that you don't forget and uh, easy to remember methodologies uh, is something that I'll also be providing. Uh, as always, the code can be found in the description below and the assignments and everything. Uh, previous lectures you can see in the playlist. If you have any questions, you can also leave those in the comment section below. And let's get started. Okay, so before we get started, we have to understand the concept of streams. So if you're talking about file handling, Talk about streams. What is a stream in Java? What is a stream? We've already done this. You know, we've already learned how to take input. You know, integer, character, we don't know. Uh, scanner, s is equal to new scanner system dot in. So that system dot in, what is that? Now we're talking about that. So it's basically a stream. We'll see what the code for that looks like, what in reality system dot in is. So streams, and by the way, I'll leave the link in the description below for all the notes. Stream is basically a sequence of data. It is a sequence of data. Now this data can be of two types. It can be byte value or it can be character value. Okay, Unicode characters. Unicode characters in a sequence order, like you have your name or whatever. And let's say you are storing an image that can be a byte format, for example. And Java performs the input output through these streams. Okay. And this is basically just an abstraction that Java provides. Abstraction that Java provides. We all know what abstraction is, like hiding all the complexity or whatever. Kunal, you want to work with files? Okay, I have some stuff built in for it. I have hidden all the complexity, you can do whatever you want. Okay. Sounds good. This stream is linked to a physical device by the Java input output systems, for example, your keyboard or whatever. Okay. Now, how does Java implement these streams? Java implements these within the class hierarchies defined in java.io package. So like classes and subclasses or whatever, we'll see. Within class hierarchies in java.io package. IO means input output. No problem, there is java.io package uh, for input output and in that java.io package we have many, many files for various use cases. That is what we are concerned with right now. Okay, simple, what these files are, how it works or whatever, we will talk about later. If you want to see system.in, let me show you system.in. Okay, here, this is a very old uh, program that we wrote, Fibonacci. And here you can say scanner in, new scanner, system.in. What is this scanner type? Uh, scanner is basically a, here you can see, it's a constructor that is being called. And this is just a class. Now, what is this system.in? What is this in? This in is basically a reference variable of type input stream. Can you see that? Input stream. I will go in details of this. Don't worry. So, in, in short, understand this. Java, programming language. You have to take input from some data or whatever in Java. That is fine. Java is saying that, Kunal, I have created some files for you. Using those files, you can take input of data. Now that file can be like an input file, 
output file. So here you will see input stream, you will see file reader, you will see file input something 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 output stream you will see you will see um, you know uh, so many files okay which we'll see more about later for now uh, I'll, I'll make it very easy for you to distinguish between these files because you're saying so many of these files they are doing the same thing they are doing input and output only then why is java providing us so many files to make things confusing don't worry about that right now okay for now just realize that sometimes Java has see this is of type print stream this is of type input stream so Java has some predefined variable for us these predefined variables in this case is keyboard okay of type input stream so you can see input stream is a class see input stream okay input stream class so let's take a look at what this input stream thing is this class is and what are these predefined variables that we have over here let's take a look into that now let me make it very simple for you you have you will be having only one doubt in this lecture and that doubt will be there are so many names some is ending with stream some is like input stream another is input reader they are doing the same thing then why do we have stream name differently reader name differently output stream is there a writer is there a writer class why are these two different classes when both of these classes are doing the same thing which is writing something let's explain that so java has two types of streams streams types of streams in java streams in java the streams are nothing but just classes abstract classes okay that give some predefined rules like what type of data you want to read or whatever first one is byte stream Okay, we have byte stream and we have a character stream. This byte stream is uh, pretty simple, used to handle input and output of bytes of data. For example, if you want to read an image, if you want to read a PDF file or whatever, so it will contain binary data. Okay, so if you're working with files or whatever, reading and writing into files, if you want to open an image in a text editor, that is a good example of byte stream. I will leave the links in a notes.txt file in the description below. So you can take a look at that. So I'm not writing too much on my whiteboard, but you get the idea. Okay. Sounds good. Now Kunal, how are these byte streams defined? Let's say I want to open an image. I want to open like a, you know, um, a file or whatever. How are these byte stream defined? They are defined in two classes, two class hierarchies, input stream and output stream. These are two classes that is used to input byte data, output byte data. And these both extend the object class, no problem. Similarly, character if we have over here, uh, character stream it's like uh, for characters so like unicode characters okay since it's unicode it can be internationalized so like you can print in hindi chinese whatever you want okay in some cases the character stream is more efficient than byte stream that's one more point i want you to know so character stream can be defined into two parts which is what reader and writer reader and writer okay sounds good cool one more thing i want to share is that since these are abstract like classes over here if i take a look at the you know these are abstract classes input stream output stream reader writer so they have some sort of predefined you know what abstract classes are right they have a function like definition and you will write your own body so several methods some of the two most important methods that you have to take a look at is read and write okay so these are abstract classes they will have read and write method which will have its own implementation now let me show you something let me show you something 
if I talk about input stream and output stream, so you can see input stream, it extends object, no problem. It has these many subclasses. Now you can take an audio input stream. What is input stream? Check here. Input stream is byte value. Input stream is byte value. So byte can be audio input stream, a byte array, a file input stream, filter input stream, input stream, object input stream, pipe input stream, sequence input stream, string buffer input stream. If I take a look at, let's say, byte array input stream, so you can see it extends input stream and input stream has uh, methods, the two more important methods that are methods that are inherited from input stream, which is which one? Read. You have seen object oriented programming playlist, right? How easy this thing is. This is very easy. It's very simple. There is a normal input stream abstract class and it has this read method that you have to implement. Like not implement, but like give your own uh, body. That's what abstract classes are. So it's like I am the abstract class input stream. And if you want to write any byte data, you want to put something in a byte data, let's say audio or file or a byte array or whatever, please use my abstract class and define your own methods. Okay, no problem. Every single one of these files will be like, okay, okay, no problem. Not a problem at all. We will extend this class and we will, uh, you know, implement all the implement the because we are an input stream so the read method or write method okay the one over here is read method so the input one is for read method and output stream is to write so don't get confused even when i'm explaining see my tongues are slipping but simple terms input stream you want to take some like you want to read something from it so output stream you want to let's say output a stream of bytes so you want to write something so here it will have let's say output stream if i want to talk about uh, byte output stream file output stream so it will be it, it will be creating write methods interpreted so you can see flush or you can have write as well if i talk about file output stream no not file output stream um, object output stream byte array output stream See write, write object and all sorts of things. Byte array output stream, write. Okay, so if you're reading simple terms, if you're reading byte data, input stream, if you're writing byte data, output stream, what type of data, be that audio, file, byte array, whatever type of data that is, for that you will use the specific class. And that specific class will be extending the either input stream or output stream. Okay, for example, you want to read a file. So I'll be like, okay, file input stream. And that file input stream is actually extending, you can see, input stream. Input stream has an abstract method called read. So it will be adding its own read or whatever, mark, support, reset. Did you get the idea? Okay, read. Sounds good. Similarly, if you want to work with characters, you will work with reader. So buffer reader, char array reader, string reader. So you can see reader. It's also a, it's also an abstract class. And there we go. Buffer reader. We can take an example of buffer reader in our in our case. Here we have buffer reader. It's taking the read method. So just the basic. Fundamentals that we learned in object and programming. When you extend an abstract class, the methods you have to write the body yourself. So like, okay, no problem. Similarly, writer. If you want to write, buffered writer. You can write inside it. Method detail, write. Okay, now, one more thing I want to show you is IO exception. What is IO exception over here? Okay, so I hope that is clear. Uh, one thing I want to show you is before we move on to the exception one, you can see that all the byte stream 
दे आर एंडिंग इन स्ट्रीम और इनपुट स्ट्रीम और आउटपुट स्ट्रीम और जस्ट स्ट्रीम सो इफ दिस क्लास इज एंडिंग इन स्ट्रीम वी नो इट्स फॉर बाइट डेटा ओके सो इफ एनी क्लास नेम इज एंडिंग विद इनपुट स्ट्रीम और आउटपुट स्ट्रीम वी नो इट्स अ हैक लेट से लिटिल बिट ऑफ अ क्लेवर हैक फॉर यू एनी फाइल दैट इज एंडिंग विद इधर इनपुट स्ट्रीम और आउटपुट स्ट्रीम नेम वी नो दैट इट इज यूज फॉर बाइट डेटा any class that is ending with either reader or writer we know that it it is for character data simple so if you are working with audio files images pdf you will use either input input stream and output stream type classes if you are working with characters you will use reader or write okay so very simple now io exception so we've already learned about exceptions in uh, you know in the object oriented programming playlist but this is basically an if you have any unexpected problems you know that the jvm encounters when it's attempting to run a program and it means that whatever is throwing the exceptions for example if you use a try catch block that is reading data from a file and you you know you can throw an io exception uh, this can be something like uh, you know a file is corrupted file could not be opened file not found okay a file is unable to read corrupt file or whatever you know you get the idea corrupt file not able to read file not found etc no problem okay that's the io exception all right uh that's basically the structure the input stream output stream any file name that ends with input stream or output stream we are using it for byte data reader or writer we are using it for character data that is the main difference that if someone asks you you can tell them okay let's move forward and do some code samples okay and now before we move on to the code i want to show you that uh, java now as we saw in the code example like we do system dot in so it has some predefined streams in java so there are some predefined streams in java there is system dot out also system dot out so system dot out we have done this if you check the code of system dot out like we do control control click this is the standard output stream by default the console standard output stream console you have system dot in standard input stream and uh, what is this by default keyboard if it's a byte stream it doesn't mean you cannot input characters because system dot in was of what type input stream and we know that when it ends with stream it is what byte data okay you have system dot error also err this is what standard error in stream which is also standard error also by default the console sometimes you know you get error so that's it okay so this is of type what we saw in the code base input stream type these two are what print stream type okay so since it's ending with stream they are all byte streams how easy it is now okay okay so here you can see scanner inside the argument scanner is taking an input stream source this you can type of any input stream now this you can put of any input stream now but here it's taking the by default one of type input stream and this input stream as you can see it's an abstract class we have already seen it's an abstract class it has some methods over here as you can see okay read and all sorts of things abstract read next int or whatever you want to do you can do it okay cool if we talk about next int you will see next int is in scanner 
don't be confused between scanner and the input stream okay if you take about the scanner class then this is basically a simple text scanner that can parse primitives and strings using regular expression and it's 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 just it's just a class that is helping us to take input like it is you can see over here talk about scanner class it implements iterator and close ribbon okay and inside its constructor as we saw it was taking input stream so the idea is that it you are telling the scanner class where to take the data from when you do this line this line you saying that take the data from keyboard and scanner itself has some methods like next int etc etc next char and new line all sorts of things okay hope that is clear let's take some examples we make be yeah so i'm going to create a new repl you can find the code in the description below file handling okay let's move forward zooming in a little bit okay so here let's say we talk about reader let's say we start with characters first and we want to read them so there's a reader class and writer class no problem reader we have the input stream reader buffered reader let's start with input stream reader then we'll do buffered reader no problem um here it's saying that the input stream reader uh it is a bridge from byte stream to character stream so very simple stuff this is basically used to convert byte streams to character streams okay it has a many overloaded constructors that we can use so we can take uh, each input stream like uh, whatever input stream you want to take the simplest one we have already done is system dot in so ideally converting the system dot in we know by is byte data so it will convert it into character data as the first parameter okay it will take it as a first parameter okay so let's see how that works and uh, there's one more thing you have to close these streams as well so when you close these streams you know when you are done with the input streams you have to close them as well so they have these other methods that they have uh, called close that's it okay so it re basically releases any resources that are associated with it okay cool awesome one thing i want to mention over here is that since this is an input stream reader kunal you are saying you have to close it because this is a resource okay uh, how do you know that i'll give you an example a hint any class that implements auto closable we can consider that class as a resource okay hence it's very important to close it once you're done using it okay auto closable as you can see over here may hold resources like a file or socket handles until it's closed so let's say you're working on a file or you're working on a character stream or whatever it will hold some resources in your program in your computer and once you're done with it you have to close it so that it releases those those resources okay sound good so input stream reader class let's try that uh, i'm just going to say something like you know try and i'm going to open i'm going to say input stream reader input stream reader is equal to new input stream reader and it takes what input stream which is for byte data because it ends with stream so i can just say system dot in for example it takes system dot in okay system dot out dot print ln i'm going to say enter some letters now i can say int letters is equal to let's say i'm going to let's say input some number while input stream is ready i have not closed it for example i'm going to just say 
system.out.println if it's an integer then I can convert it in let's say a char of letters okay then I take letters in again all right sounds good once you're done you can say close this stream and let's say I don't add a new line here I'll add a new line Which exception it will catch? IO exception. And I can just display E dot message. If you get any error, just display the message. Pretty standard stuff. Import Java dot io dot io exception import java dot io dot input stream reader run this get message enter some letters 34 34 sounds good okay so you're taking data in byte stream and you're putting it out in character stream make sense Sounds good. Let's move forward. One more thing is that you don't have to write this close because try catch block will automatically close it. New Java feature, I believe, after Java 7. Um, so it will automatically close the, the stream. Okay, and you can see input stream reader itself has another subclass, file reader. So for reading character files, okay, no problem. Not a problem. I will copy just it also. Yeah, auto closable. So auto closable. So then I will use try catch. And here I will say file reader is equal to new file reader read from a file and obviously I have to pass the the file so you can either pass the file name or you can pass the file object so there's a file object as well that you can use to directly you know work with files uh, so like create new files and do all sorts of things so we'll be taking a look at that as well so I'm just going to keep it open so we work with it okay let's see so here if I just write let's say note.txt and letters is equal to I'll just call it file reader, file reader, and file reader, characters of letter, file reader, file reader. Looks good. Let's see what it says. Cannot file, sim oh, uh, file reader, yeah. Java.io. Let me just import everything. Wildcard imports not a good thing, but for demo purpose, I'm fine. So it's saying an error, and that error is no such file or directory. Make sense? You can say note.txt. Hello, my name is Kunal. Run. Hello, my name is Kunal. Okay. Reading file reader 
So if it's ending with writer reader, we know it's what? Character stream, so reading just one character at a time. Okay, this int is basically just storing the letters or whatever. And I'm directly converting it into character as you can see over here. If I just print like this, then it will show me the ASCII value. But I'm converting into character, not a problem. You can also do something like char. Now it's giving error. So if you look at the documentation, the read actually returns an integer. So it is going to read whatever character or whatever thing you have and it will store its Unicode value. Because we're working with characters, so it is storing Unicode value. That's why giving me an error. That's why I have to write integer over here. So you, previously your doubt maybe Kunal, why are you writing integer over here, not character? Because that is what read returns. Very simple because it's type of character stream and character means ASCII and un, sorry, like Unicode values or whatever you want to call it. Okay, that's how you're reading the file. Now you're like Kunal, I want to create a new file or whatever. How do we do that? For that, you will not use reader or writer. You will use the class file. Okay, let's see. We'll, we'll see this as well. Create a new file, do all sorts of things. Okay, let's take a look at another file, buffered reader. Let's see what buffered reader is. It said it reads text from a character input stream, uh, from a character input stream, buffering characters so as to provide it efficient reading of characters, arrays and lines. So this is used to read characters, uh, you know, text from a character stream. And it has the same read method that is both in input stream reader and the file reader that we saw previously uh, to read like a single byte at a time. There's one more method called read line that you will find over here. Um, somewhere read read line so it reads a line of text it reads the line of text if i take a look at the constructor so it's taking of type reader in and we know what is the type of reader what type of input stream it is taking character input stream so creates a buffering character input stream so if you want to input this is a good question for you Using buffered reader, if you want to take inputs from your keyboard, can you write system.in over here? Absolutely not. System.in is of type input stream, like the byte ones. This is taking reader. So how do you convert byte stream to reader, which is character stream? How do you convert that? We just saw using input stream reader. You forgot so easily using input stream reader, right? So very simple. You can do something like, let's say, buffered reader, buffered reader is equal to new, buffered reader, and this is going to have a new input stream. But I cannot write system.in because because this argument inside this method in, the, in this constructor has to be of reader type has to be of reader type so I can convert system.in into a character stream because system.in is byte stream using input stream so I can say new input stream reader system.in sounds good so this as you can see, we have already seen in the above the first example, it converts byte stream into character stream. And then the buffered reader is converting that character stream. Not, not converting, reading that character stream. And this is what we want. This is what we want. So now buffered reader here is a character based stream that is linked to your keyboard. Keyboard originally is byte. So what is happening is byte to char stream and then reading char stream. That's it. That is what is happening. Okay. Sounds good. Buffered reader. Cool. 
cool what i can do is i can also put it in try catch try buffer reader new buffer reader system dot in okay zoom in a little bit right so i can say if i want to read a key sequence of characters i can say i'll just print whatever i'm reading system dot out dot print ln you typed read line so instead of one character at a time like we were doing previously you can read entire lines okay and then catch io exception not a problem not a problem at all so since this is of type reader you can add another one as well you can add file reader in it as well can you not do that you can add file reader also any reader type you can add now new file reader you can do this also you can do this also okay so instead of this now what you can say is that while br dot ready okay you can see what ready is tells you whether the stream is ready to be read while br dot ready i will just print whatever is in my file that's it so it's taking reader i will give it reader and you get the idea of what is the use of buffered reader we are taking the like reading it essentially the character stream okay line 41 okay i can write something now i'm over here how is it going you typed how is it going i did not do system dot out dot print ln that's why i did not print the file sub you wrote sub and then it's reading the file also at once using this very cool stuff buffer reader class also done very simple so reading i hope that should be clear for now input stream output stream sorry input stream and uh, input stream reader output stream uh, and then the the reader class itself and file reader all sorts of things you can explore it on your own these you can go if you go to reader you can check out all these you can also check out input stream and you can check out all these One more thing I want you to notice is that people often ask me how do we take fast input output in Java, let's say for QA rounds, online coding competitions, computer programming or whatever. Uh, this line, so you know what is doing now? Not this one, this one. So it's still taking input from the user, but in uh, originally in input stream, which is byte stream, converting it into character stream, and we know character stream is like much faster. Um, and uh, apart from this first example that we took which was reading one by one you can also read like the entire lines or you can use one by one as well so fast input output fast input input in java um for online coding rounds or whatever for competitions use this line but for qa rounds it doesn't really matter okay reader done we did reader now writer so with writer um and similarly you know there is input stream output stream so we have done that already with the you know with read like system dot in system dot out same thing uh so one more thing remaining is just writer and then the file but if you have further questions or anything go to the documentation you can read about all of these things so total we know four types uh what do you want to do let's do output stream writer what is output stream writer bridge from character stream to byte stream but this time it is used to input data 
So as you can see, pretty simple. It is also implementing auto closable. So we will be able to use the try catch block from the character stream to byte stream is a bridge. Characters written to it are encoded into bytes using a specific cache set can be used to specify a name given explicitly or based on the default uh, cache set. Whatever the doc documentation says is fine. But in simple terms, the same thing we were doing with uh, input stream reader. Now we're doing with output stream reader, but to print stuff. Output stream writer, output stream writer. So here you can see in output stream writer, there are only four public methods that are available if I talk about public methods. So you have the close, you have the, um, if you scroll down to methods here, close, you have flush, get encoding and write. Flush, close, get encoding and get encoding and write and the write method has if you scroll down three variations so variation number one variation number two variation number three what is this called function overloading we have done this in the past first one here is just taking int c uh, not a problem int specifying the character to be written not a problem so single character if you want to write and then you have uh, a portion of array of characters so like 16 lower bits of char integer values if you want to write that and then uh, higher bits as well um, like here you can see if you have a string writes a portion of string if you want that you can do that as well okay so for this one in C uh, you can write a single character you can uh, have like uh, 16 lower bits of char integer values or whatever and then you have the char array over here and uh, you have a string as well so plenty of options and the flush stream which is just flushing the stream um very simple output writer so let's see how we can do that output here I'll say output stream output stream let's say is equal to system dot out because that is what the type of this is and if I say os dot write let's say something like an emoji emoji we copy an emoji. Can I try pasting it here? Let's see if it is going to print or not. Just an empty line. Let's see what it gives me. Error. Illegal character. Why? Because we know that if we're moving with if it ends with like stream over here and we're trying to write in it then because it is based for unicode uh, here you can see that the range is exceeded range is exceeded try catch output stream writer output stream writer is equal to new output stream writer and it will take output stream type in it so system dot out I can put now I can say output stream writer write and say hello world so it will automatically call the string one the string method I just showed you this one Okay, you can say write 97, that is also fine. Now I can say, let's say 10, whatever that might be. I think it's new line, you can add in characters as well. Okay, you can also say new line like this sequence of characters also okay so if you want to do a char array so you can see 
ARR is equal to if I create a new char array let's say hello world dot two char array I can write this char array in it also okay because we saw in the right stream char array I can write that also not a problem let's try this one also see what we'll get catch io exception e system dot out dot print ln e dot get message try catch looks good okay let's try and run this Again, one error, as you can see, pretty, pretty standard, that's what we expected. Hello world, 97 is A, 10 is a new line, so new line, then an A, again a new line, hello world, very simple. Okay. So I hope it's understandable why I did not print the emoji, because it's a character that I'm writing over here. Because it ends with writer, it is having character in it. Okay. Output stream writer done. What else you want to do? Close. Output stream writer has a file writer just like that had a reader. File writer writing for characters and files. Okay. Uh, file writer we can do that. Um, yeah, so just in character based files, I can just write stuff in it. And one thing I want to mention is since it's like inside the output stream, there's output stream writer and that output stream writer has this uh, file writer. So file writer in itself does not override any public methods, but it inherits all of its methods from its super class output stream writer. Same thing as we did previously. File reader. Okay. So let's see how we can do that. Try file writer file writer is equal to new file writer. I'm just gonna pass a note.txt over here. Now I can say file writer dot write hello world in it. What does it already contain? Hello, my name is Kunal. Run this. Okay. It override it, the original file and wrote hello world in it. Okay. So you can see it got overridden. Sounds good. If you don't want to override, so let's say I write something again on it. Hello world, my name is Rahul. Then this hello world will be removed. It will write from the start. Whatever is in this file will be removed. So only one line will contain hello world, my name is Rahul. But what if you want to append in inside of it? Let's say I run this program again in some other character. This should be appended. In that case, when you're creating the object, write true over here. This is an argument for true. File writer, a constructor, boolean append. Do you want to append? Yes. Now it will not rewrite. Oh. Oh, my bad. Inside it. True. So you can see it appended, this should be appended. It did not delete the original content. Okay, very simple stuff. We're also learning how to contribute, how to learn from the documentation as we move forward. Okay, 
one more thing we can do is we can also check buffered write or what is so it says writes text to a character output stream buffering characters as to provide for the efficient writing of single characters arrays of string so again it's using a buffered uh, buffered class so it's going to be more efficient and uh, you can write text to a character stream and uh, here also if we check the write uh, method over here so it also has three overloaded int c char ch and then the string same as the previous one then uh, obviously this is going to be a new line one so writes a line separator so you don't have to write hash like slash n slash n if you in, in your output stream anymore like we were doing previously so also very straightforward let's take a look at it okay so for example let's say i can copy paste this and i can say buffered writer buffered writer is equal to new buffered writer and here I'm going to say it's going to take a new output stream uh, so I can just say new file writer same thing that we did previously okay let's say we don't want to append buffer writer dot write this should uh, I can just say something like so we say Hare Krishna okay and there will be one more base here run this it's fine notes Hare Krishna okay same thing with buffered so similar stuff you can try out right new line etc let's take a look at file the file class and how that works okay I separated the previous input and output example file so you can understand but Let's say we are importing java.file, java.file exception and let's say I try to create a new file. So I can say file dot file object is equal to new file something that does not exist. Let's say new file dot txt catch io exception e get message let's try to run this oh not dot file file object okay because we're never throwing it so i see what is happening let's take a look at the constructor creates a new file instance okay okay it will not create a new file it will have a file instance and there should be a create 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 new file automatically creates a new file okay so I can say file object dot create new file run okay file created tada very easy very simple stuff okay and I can write in this file for example let's say we are doing one by one creating the file write in the file so we already did that output here file writer new file writer let's copy this try file writer new file writer let's say new file.txt not a problem and i can say file writer dot write anything hello world or whatever and you know since I told you unicode character so you can write any like Hindi English so let's say we do sans Sanskrit uh, Sanskrit uh, say Gita Shlok 18.66 my favorite Shlok Sarva Dharma Pratyajya Maamikam Shannam Raja 
copy this paste that should work okay and close the stream and run looks good new file.txt see very cool now you can read this also I can read from the file how do we read from the file using I can do it using scanner as well so I say something like scanner mm -mm. scanner is equal to oh no let's not do scanner let's uh, use file reader Mm. new file.txt okay so just thing we did previously um, file reader and I can just do something like this also copy this paste this new file.txt that's it see in the console Savadharma Pratijayam Avekam Sharnam Vaja right very cool very very cool okay you can delete a file as well let's say if I create a new file random.txt then I want to delete the file okay let me try to run this much random.txt is created now we want to delete random.txt create new file let's say a file is created uh, I can also say file object dot delete okay so this actually returns true or false so I can say if this is true then just print the name of the file that is deleted file object dot get name see random dot txt deleted so it got created here and then deleted and then it just output whatever was deleted random.txt file handling done and you can see I just did copy paste from previous ones okay so in short we just discussed about you know the two types of streams in Java we learned about what are streams actually called in Java like collection of you know like a stream of data that you can use to input or output then we learned about four, four two types which is byte stream character stream byte stream has two types for input output uh, character stream also has two type reader writer for input output and those four are actually abstract classes that have subclasses that extend some of the methods and uh, have their own body like for read and write method so this whole hierarchy we learned into example now what you can do is you can try out various subclasses like for audio files for images try opening up an image maybe a mini project can you can be for you you can try opening an image see how it's represented its RGB values maybe around 0 to 255 that's what the values are so you can make some tweaks into that and maybe if it's a 3d array you can convert it into 2d array and maybe you can make a you know black and white image or do whatever you want flip the image all sorts of things now that you can represent it in a stream of characters and then try to create it into an image again like write into an image so read from image do some anything edit and then write it into an image and see how the image changes just explore and I showed you the documentation as well so lots more to explore and I think things like these you know it sometimes keeps on changing with newer versions of Java so documentation is the best way for you to get started and uh, explore more and my code and assignments and links and everything can be found in the description below you can check out the previous DSA lectures as well
very cool so the links can be found in the description below you can check out the you can click on fork and you can run it on your own browser if you have any questions leave those in the comment section below uh, since we're now doing more advanced data structures in the futures like heaps and nano programming in graphs we'll be making use of files and all these input streams as well i taught you how to take input like efficient input as well um, using files we saw that i'd highly recommend check on, checking out the documentation you can join the learning public initiative you can take a screenshot and share it on socials use hashtag dsa with kunal uh, if you want to support my work just like and comment uh, that's the least you can do share if you want to go extra you can share as well with your friends but at least like and comment and thanks a lot for watching if you have any questions leave those in the comment section below all the links code assignments notes can be found in the description below just clone the github repository and you will find all the pdfs in your local repository local storage and uh, yeah thanks a lot for watching i'll see you in the next one have a great day